Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. Today we're going to take a detailed look at Shopify's new meta objects. Many of you have requested that. And more specifically, we're going over what they are, how they are different from meta fields, and when to use which. And then we can also go over two different examples on how to use them via the customizer without code. But of course, also with liquid code in your theme files. So it should be a lot of fun and let's get started. All right, so first announced at Shopify's Winter Editions 2023, Meta Objects provide a new way to define and manage custom data models across a store. So in simple terms, you can use them to store additional information. An easy to understand example here would be that you're running a fashion store and maybe you wanna have a list of all the different designers you work with. Yeah, maybe just their full name, a small description, a profile image and a link to their website. But now the question becomes, how do you store all that information? Because designers are not really products, they're not really blog posts, they're not really pages. So there is no default data model that supports creating new designers on the backend. And that's exactly what the new meta objects allow us to do. With them, we can define our own objects and we can define what kind of input fields we need. So we could say a text field for the name, text field for the description, uh, image picker for the photo and URL picker for their website. And based on the definition, we can then add them one by one, create all the designers, yeah, basically create as many data entries as we need. Okay, so far so good. Now we have a rough understanding of what meta objects are, but let's also quickly go over how they are different from meta fields. That's gonna be important. So as we just saw, meta objects let you define completely new data models like the designer. And meta fields on the other hand, are rather meant to extend the existing data models like if you need to store additional information right on your products. And yeah, this could be things like ingredients, the energy efficiency class for electronic devices, um, the strength of a coffee blend, or just anything you want to show on the product page. So in summary, meta objects let you define completely new models and meta fields let you extend the existing ones. But <laughs> there's also one use case where meta objects and meta fields come together or where they intersect. And that is when you put a meta object inside a meta field. And that sounds more complicated than it is. So let's stick with the fashion store example. First, we want to have one overview page that shows all the different designers we work with. Perfect use case for meta objects. But what if I also want to have a section on product pages that maybe shows the corresponding designer, like this item was designed by X. Then this would be information that belongs right on the product. So meta fields would be a good use case. Okay, now I could go ahead and create all these different meta fields like designer name, designer description, designer photo, designer URL. But I already have my meta objects and yeah, I also don't want to create so many meta fields. And let's say one designer had like 20 products then I would need to edit 20 products one by one and always put the name, the description. So, or I would have to find a way to edit them in bulk. So it, it's not ideal to solve this via meta fields, right? So what we can do instead is just create a single meta field on our products, we call that designer. And then this meta field holds a reference to the meta object. And that also means I can now assign one designer to multiple products. And if in the future I wanna change something like update the description, I only have to do it in one place and then all the products will be updated automatically because they just hold reference to that single designer object, which is awesome. So here's the updated summary Meta objects help you to create completely new data models like the designer. Meta fields help you to extend existing data models like additional information for your products. And meta fields can also hold a reference to meta objects if you have an object that relates to multiple products like one designer that has designed 20 different products. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so now that we have a solid understanding of how the concept works, let's start putting things into practice and we are gonna be building the two examples, designer section on product pages and overview page listing all the designers. And as you can see on the screen, I got a small demo store right here with a few products in it. And first of all, I wanna create the new meta object definition, the designer object. So in order to do that, you can just use the search bar and type data. That will get you to meta objects right away. Or you can also use the sidebar navigation and then go to content. And then you see meta objects and since I don't have any definitions in here, you will find this button at definition. And that also gets me to the settings, custom data, where I can define new objects. Okay, so as a first step, we have to enter a name for our new object. Let's just go with designer. 
you can also see that it generates the type down below, lowercase designer. This is gonna be relevant if you wanna use it via the API. But yeah, the name is gonna be more relevant on the admin dashboard. So we're gonna leave it at that. And then we can add all the different fields that we need. So I'm gonna add a single line text field, gonna call that one name. We can also add an internal description if we want or some rules for validation, like is this field required? Um, do we wanna have a minimum or max maximum length of characters? Or do we wanna filter certain characters? Uh, but in this case, we would just leave it open and just add. Then we also need one multi-line text field for the description. Then let's also add a file picker for the photo. And lastly, we can add a link or URL. So where do we have that? Down here, other URL for the designer's website. Okay. And I think with that, we should be good to go. Designer, name, description, photo, and their website. So let's save that definition. We can do that in the top right corner or lower right corner. So now our definition was saved successfully and we can start adding entries. It's also suggested right here. Uh, but let me show you how to get there without the short link. So on the admin dashboard, I would just go back to content on the sidebar, then meta objects, and here we can add a new entry. So now it suggests the designer, as that's pretty much the only definition I have in the store. So let's just click that. And in here, it's pretty straightforward. This is very similar to the product editor. So we just enter a name, the description, select the photo, the website, all the fields that we previously defined. And to not bore you with that, I would skip ahead and create three designers. So we got some test data in here. Okay, so now I've finished adding my test data. Uh, I was just putting some random names and then a chat GPT generated designer description, uh, some image, and also, yeah, as a website, I just put Shopify.com. So this is pretty self-explanatory. We can just go in here, edit things. We can add new entries. Um, and now let's see how we can use that data, how we can use our new meta object, or better to say, the new meta object entries on the front end and in the theme files. So let's get started with the designer section on product pages. That's gonna be the no code example. But in order to do that, we first have to create the designer meta field so that we can assign one designer to each product. So in order to do that, we can use the search bar and just type data. That gets us to the meta field definitions. Uh, so yeah, you can also access this via settings and then custom data. And then on top, you find the meta fields. So then let's go into products. Uh, as you can see, I already have like four meta fields in here. They were created by some app. So let's just ignore these and then click on add definition. And our new meta field is gonna be called designer. Okay. Uh, namespace and key, not too important right now. This is more important if you wanna access this meta field in your theme files. So for now we can just leave it on the default, custom.designer. And then we're gonna select the input type. And the input type is gonna be a reference to a meta object. And the type of meta object that we wanna accept is designer. We only have one choice here. Okay, uh, let's save that. So now this new meta field was created successfully and it's also pinned in the product editor. That's what we're gonna see next. So let's close these settings and then navigate to our products. And here I'm just gonna bring up three random products. So maybe this one. Uh, the dark denim top and these LED shoes. And now inside the product editor, if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we should find our meta fields right here. We only have one, the designer, and it allows us to pick a meta object of type designer. So we can select the entry we want. And let's say this was designed by Steve. So let's just select him. And yeah, now the reference has been assigned and now we can save this product. Next product, the denim top. And here we're gonna select a different designer, Stella. Okay, let's save that. And lastly, the LED shoes, uh, those were designed by Alexander. Okay, so far so good, let's save everything. And now I wanna bring up the customizer and build a custom section where we use all that data. So let's go to sales channel online store. Here I got a recent version of the Dawn theme installed and now I will bring up the front end customizer by clicking customize. So let's do that. And to test everything, I now wanna bring up one of my three demo products where we have data in place. 
Okay, so here we got the first example, the dark denim top. And now I want to add a new section down here. Uh, we can use the image with text section, just keep it simple. Okay, now I want to fill in all these placeholders, like the image, the headline, the description, and the button is going to point to their website. Okay, so first let's get started with the image. It's the first element right here. And on the right half side, we can select one. And now we can click on this dynamic data icon here, connect dynamic source. And then we should be able to find our designer meta object reference. Okay, let's click that. And here only, yeah, one of the input fields makes sense. So Shopify realizes that. So we can only select the photo. Okay, and this should already work. Awesome. Now, next one, uh, the headline. Same here. We click on this dynamic data source field. And here we can select different things like the product title, the vendor. These are all like text related resources or text based resources. But we want to select our designer object and then the name field. Okay, and now it actually combined both. So we got to re remove this one here and we are only left with the name. Okay, perfect. Now the description, same thing again, remove the default text, insert dynamic source, designer object, and description. Okay, perfect. And then lastly, uh, we can remove the button label, name it website, and the link we wanna add here comes from a dynamic data source, designer object, and website URL. Okay, perfect, let's save that. So to quickly recap, we've created a new section and the data is coming from the designer that was assigned to this product right here. And it should now work for all the products. So let's just preview this one. We should see the same section, but with a different designer. How cool is that? And one of the main benefits we enjoy now is that let's say our designer Steve had like 10 different products and I wanna update Steve's description. I would only have to update the meta object entry, like the designer entry, and not all the products one by one. Okay, so this was the first example, how we can use meta objects via this dynamic data source that we find in the customizer. All right, so then let's move on to the second example and see how we can build our overview page using liquid code. And in order to do that, let's first create a new page. So we go to sales channel online store, and then on the left, we find pages. And then let's add a new one. And we're gonna call this one designers. <laughs> okay, save this one. And then we wanna go back to online store themes because now I wanna edit the code of my theme and build a new section. Um, as a rule of thumb, if you're not working in a development store, make sure to duplicate your theme first and work in that theme copy first before you publish everything. Um, but yeah, since this is a development store, I can go to edit code right away. So I click these three buttons here and then edit code. This brings up Shopify's internal theme editor. And then let's go to sections, add a new section right here. Type is going to be liquid. We're going to call it designer. Okay, so now we got our new file here. And usually I would now first start to build out these profile cards with HTML and CSS and then replace all the values with dynamic liquid code. But since there's not supposed to be an HTML and CSS tutorial, I've asked one of the team members to prepare that for us. I'm gonna explain everything that we paste here, and then we're still gonna replace the hard-coded values with liquid code, so you get an understanding for how that works. Okay, so first let me get rid of everything we have here, and then paste the code that we've prepared. Okay, let me explain what we have here. Okay, so first of all, we have a bit of styling, like some CSS. You could also put this in different files, but for the sake of simplicity, let's keep everything in one for today. So this is the styling that makes up the profile cards. Then we have the HTML markup for one single card. So we have a container. Every designer has an image. For now, this is a placeholder image. Uh, and then we have the body with the name and some description and then also a button. So we will have to replace all these values with dynamic liquid code. And lastly, we have the section schema which makes the whole thing available in the customizer. So it's just named designer. And yeah, we can actually check this out on the front end. So let's save this file for now and see what we have at this point. So back in the theme customizer, I now brought up our designer page. 
And on the left half side, I want to add a new section. So actually at the very bottom, we find our new designer section. Let's add that. As you can see for now, this is just one hard coded element or one hard coded profile card. This is exactly what we find here in our HTML markup, the container, the image, the hard coded name, the hard coded description, the button. And we can actually save this section right here because we want to have it on the page and we will only edit the code from now on. And maybe also one side note, you might also want to create a different page template for the designer section, but that's not the point of this video. The point is how to access meta objects with liquid code. So let's stick with this super simple example. Okay, so then let's get started by fixing the first thing. Instead of just rendering one card, I want to render one for each of the designers. So back in our code file, let me zoom in a bit here so you can read this better. Here's our markup for one single card. And I want to repeat this for every designer that we have on the back end. So let me start with a for loop. So curly bracket percentage sign for. And then whenever you start a for loop, you also have to terminate it somewhere. So end for at the bottom. And then for every designer in the shop.meta objects. So this is the first learning, like meta objects are stored in this global shop variable. And we want to access the type designer. And we also want to access the values, which is going to be more relevant when we replace these hard coded values. Um, but for now, this should be good enough. So for every designer in the shop meta objects of type designer, we want to put out one of these cards here. Let's save that and see if it works. So now you can see that we already get three cards because we have three designers on the back end. And now we can go on and fix the next thing, making this data dynamic because currently everything is hard coded. So we need to replace the image, the name, the description and the button link. So let's head back to the code. And maybe we can just get started with the image. So let's get rid of this placeholder image right here. And then I'm going to use liquid again. So double curly brackets. And since we are already looping over these designer objects, we can now reference it from right here. So we can say designer dot, I think we called it photo and then pipe character image URL. That's a liquid filter. And then as base width, we want to put 500 pixels. Okay. Should be fine. Next thing we want to replace the name. So liquid again, designer dot name. We also want to replace this hard coded description, double curly brackets, designer dot description. And then lastly, the button, uh, the text is fine. See all that products, but we need to add an href for the link. So href equals to, and then quotes. And here I'm going to use double curly brackets, designer dot website. Okay. Should be fine. Let's save that. Okay. Seems we have a small arrow here. Uh, let's see line 49. Um, okay. Forgot to wrap this in quotes. Apologies. Okay. And then now we should be able to save this. Okay. Perfect. And now the next time I refresh the front end, we should be able to see three different cards with three different designers and three different descriptions. How awesome is that? All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We've really come a long way. We've seen what meta objects are, how to use them. We've seen the difference between meta fields and meta objects, but also how we can use them together by putting a meta object reference into a meta field. Uh, we've learned how to build a no code section with dynamic values by using the customizer. We've also learned how to access meta objects with liquid. So yeah, I really hope you learned something new. I really hope you had fun watching. Let me know your questions in the comments and check out the resources in the description and have an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.